In November of 2013, India sent a spacecraft by the name of Mangalyaan towards Mars. The spacecraft traveled for something like 10 months, covered a distance of 600 million kilometers, and finally reached Mars. The Indians, of course, were very happy. And now, Pakistanis want to know whether they can go to Mars and what it might take. But first, was it really a great scientific achievement of India's? Let's remember that in 1998, India had tested five nuclear bombs and there was an outburst of celebrations across India. But it was not a great scientific achievement because basically this was 1945 science and 1945 technology. Today, the making of atom bombs has become so easy that if you gave a PhD student a thesis problem to design a simple nuclear weapon, he would very well be able to accomplish that. But with Mangalyan, it's different. There are many stages of this very complex space operation. First, putting the spacecraft into orbit around Earth, then using a technique called slingshotting, where you use a part of the energy of the Earth to propel the spacecraft forward, and this uses then less fuel. Then there's a matter of communicating with the spacecraft because when it goes very, very far away, then it takes many, many minutes for light or even radio waves to travel that distance. And so a spacecraft traveling at that terrific speed can make a huge mistake, even if there's a difference of a few seconds. So yes, the sending of Mangalyan to Mars was a great scientific achievement and India needs to be congratulated on that, especially because this scientific mission, this is going to look at the presence of methane on Mars, which is necessary for us to know whether there could be life over there or not. This took only something like 70 or 75 million dollars. And that's the price of an F-16 or another fighter jet of the modern kind. Then, the fact is that the Chinese failed in their first attempt to go to Mars. And so, yes, it is a genuine accomplishment. What made this accomplishment possible for India? I will identify three reasons. First, Indian people and young Indians in particular are very enthused about the idea of science. A survey was done in India a few years ago and it was found that most Indian students want to become scientists. They want to become people like Stephen Hawking. They want to understand black holes, super strings, quantum mechanics and so forth. Of course, most of them go off into ordinary professions, but the fact is that they have an enormous enthusiasm and that enthusiasm then translates into the very best ones amongst them becoming very good scientists. There are science museums, at least one in every city, but sometimes two, sometimes three. You see that there are many scientific societies, very active ones, which have lectures, demonstrations. In fact, when I went to India something like 10 years ago and gave lectures on science, I had halls in which hundreds of people turned out. There was pin drop silence and they would ask very good questions as well. So something of Jawaharlal Nehru's enthusiasm for science has rubbed off on the young people over there. The second reason is that India has some very good universities. Now I don't mean to say that all of them are good. Some of them are actually not good at all. Some are pretty mediocre. Some are good and some are excellent. In fact, the excellent ones are so good that uh, the PhDs from them are snapped up as professors in American universities, or at least as assistant professors. The third reason is that India values its great scientists enormously. For example, someone like Ramanujan is mythologized in Indian textbooks. Students hear stories about him. C.V. Raman, who discovered the Raman effect and got the Nobel Prize, has an institute named after him. Similarly, S.N. Bose, 
or the great geneticist Hargobind Khorana, etc., etc. For a developing country like Pakistan, there are basically two different ways by which we can get to Mars. One is the Arab way, in which basically you buy a ticket. For example, the Saudi prince Sultan ibn Salman ibn Saud was sent into space in 1985 on board the American Space Shuttle, and he had a very good time there. Similarly, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, is planning to send a mission to Mars in something like 15 years from now, and basically the way they're going to do it is the way they built Dubai. That means they're going to import the European technologists, the American scientists, and they're going to get all the parts and everything, and then they're going to launch it from there. But if we want to do it the Chinese and Indian way, which means that we do it step by step, using principles, absorbing them, making our own technology, then we'll have to do three very important things first. First of all, we need to create enthusiasm in our young people for science. Right now it's not there. They don't want to become scientists. They want to become bankers. They want to become hotel managers. They want to become CEOs of some corporation, this, that. Very, very few want to become scientists. And that's because, look, in our television, there are no science programs. Our students don't read English very much. And so the world of science that comes in the form of TV programs, books especially, is lost to them. We've got to change this. Now, we have a lot of universities, a lot more than 15 years ago. But are they good university? Do they open up minds? Do they create new knowledge? And here, be very careful. The creation of new knowledge is not the same as the creation of more papers and more PhDs. Those two are very different from each other. Thirdly, and I'd say very importantly, we need to be able to tell the difference between a genuine scientist and a fake one. Pakistan has had some good scientists, but only one great scientist, and that is Abdus Salam. The world recognizes him. He got the Nobel Prize, but he did even more than just a Nobel Prize. And yet, no street in Pakistan is named after him. No institute is named after him. He is a persona non grata. That is so very sad. And what this means is that basically we have fakes, people who support the water car, or people who promote the water car, etc., who are then looked upon as great scientists in Pakistan by our children. That's not right. That is very destructive. And so let me conclude with this. If Pakistan wants to move forward, it's got to become a more open-minded society. It's got to be much more tolerant of the various peoples that live within it. It's got to celebrate diversity. It's got to recognize genuine achievement.